Oh my god. Sick. Sick of being sick. Finds this tape. Just know that I, Henry Emily, I'll be dead by the time you find me. Warning: The VHS tape featured in this video was restricted by YouTube due to objectionable content that rendered it unsuitable for viewers under the age of 18. Wait, wait, please, no, Michael, Michael. While this video will adhere to YouTube's advertiser safe guidelines, viewer discretion is still obviously advised. <laughs> July 21st, 1983. One day before the party, a child lies awake in their bedroom seeking comfort from the darkness in psychic friend Fredbear. Freddy, are you awake? <sighs> okay, good. I can't sleep because I'm afraid of Michael's gonna scare me or, or maybe it will come back again. You know, the monster in a hall. If I go to sleep, it's gonna eat me. <laughs> I hope daddy can watch me blow up my candles and sing happy birthday to me. I miss mommy. Daddy says she passed away when I was little. He said she loved us very much. Freddy, you'll never leave me, right? Good. Freddy, shh. Be quiet. You don't want the monsters to get us, do you? What was that? Did, did you hear that, Freddy? Wait. Crawling off their bed, they go to investigate this strange noise, but as they do, the grandfather clock in the hallway strikes midnight. Subscribe to Theft King, unless you hate puppies and kittens. There are a lot of FNAF VHS tapes, and many are quite dark. However, it isn't often that you're greeted with a YouTube viewer discretion warning immediately upon clicking one. During these next few moments, I'll be addressing a few things that have been left in the dark for so, so long. What I've done, why I've done it, why I plan on ending my life in just a few minutes. Oh, 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 please. In 1977, business partners Henry Emily and William Afton opened Fredbear's Family Diner. It was a heartwarming place full of fun, games, prizes, and laughter. William Afton was no ordinary man though. He was brilliant, and he developed two animatronic characters to serve as the establishment's mascots, Fredbear and Spring Bonnie. They were the coolest inventions I'd ever seen. Unfortunately, things weren't going well at the Afton household. With his wife having died years prior, William was forced to raise his two sons, Michael and Norman, alone, and the two didn't get along. Speaking of Michael and Norman, how they doing? My oldest son is still a rat bastard who I should have left behind long ago. But Norman, he could be better, I guess. Why? What's wrong? I took him to the hospital the other day because he wouldn't stop screaming and claiming there was a giant golden bear with huge fangs in his room. And I guarantee you it was my oldest son scaring him again. I say that because a week ago he hid behind the family TV with a boxy mask and scared the ever living <laughs> Sounds like nothing but fun at the Afton household, huh? Yeah, tell me about it. In spite of these troubles at the Afton residence, Fredbear's was going okay. They were managing. They had plans for new robots, new arcade machines. Their business was expanding. Despite his reservations, Henry truly believed that together, he and William could make Fredbear's Family Diner a place where fantasy and fun came to life. The two had faced some setbacks, but they were confident that things were going to turn around. This was going to be their year. 
was until the infamous Bite of 83, when William's oldest son, Michael, shoved his youngest son, Norman, to the mouth of Fredbear, causing the robot's jaws to crush the poor kid's frontal fucking lobe. <laughs> Sorry. Hey there, buddy! You're not looking too good! Have you been drinking enough water? What? You know, failure to hydrate can result in headaches, fatigue, and even weight gain! Uh, no thanks! Oh, Jesus! Jesus. Like, if there's a hell? Peach one OP. Yeah. Severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. I know how it feels to work late at night, staring at a monitor, fearing for your life. It's tough. It can be easy to forget just how important it is to drink water, and that's why this interruption in your regularly scheduled security feed is brought to you by Air Up. Air Up is like a loadout for your water bottle. You want your water to taste like lemon? They got lemon. Prefer cherry? No problem. You want freaking mango passion fruit? They got mango passion fruit. I like blueberry. So what is it? Air Up is a hydration system that flavors water via scent, allowing you to enjoy countless flavors without any added calories or sugars or anything really. It's awesome. Just fill up the bottle, pop on whatever flavor pod you want, pull it up to activate it, and start sipping. Air Up works using a process called retronasal olfaction. Retronasal olfaction. You may not know this, but the majority of what you taste comes from your olfactory receptors, which also play a central role in your sense of smell. When drinking from an Air Up bottle, water is imbued with flavor from your pot of choice. Inside your mouth, the flavor detaches from the water and travels to your taste receptors. You get all the benefits of a flavored beverage, but it's just plain water. My favorite thing about Air Up is that now I always have flavored water handy, which inspires me to drink more of it. Click the link in the description to check out Air Up and use code THEFTKING15 for 15% off your order. Thanks so much to Air Up for sponsoring this video. What did I just watch? You should have drank more water, buddy. The next day, Norman holds his birthday party at Fredbear's, but the only friend of his who attends is Henry's daughter, Charlotte Emily. In fact, it seems as if she's his only friend. Happy birthday, Norman! Are you excited about turning 11? I guess so, Charlie. Thanks for coming to my birthday, by the way. You're the only one that showed up. Regardless, her company is much appreciated, and she actually manages to cheer Norman up. Hey, I know what will cheer you up. Let's watch Fred Bear and Bonnie sing a song, and then maybe your cake will be ready. I don't like animatronics. They're scary. Come on, Norman. Your dad built them. They aren't gonna hurt you, they... Hey, are you okay? You barely touched your pizza. I couldn't sleep. My dad took me to the hospital the other day, and they gave me medicine for something. What did they give you medicine for? I... I don't know. It was a big word. But now I see monsters in my room, and he wanted to eat me. That's not good. However, moments later, Norman's elder brother Michael arrives with a few of his friends, much to the birthday boy's chagrin. Uh-oh. What's wrong? I see Michael and he's coming over. Meanwhile, in the back, William and Henry are busy going over the business's finances, which are not doing well. God damn it, Henry! We're barely gonna be able to pay the bills and keep the electricity running for the robot! At 5.56, William remarks that he intends to carry out the birthday cake for Norman, and instructs Henry to initiate the animatronic special birthday routine at 6 p.m. In another world, perhaps William would have walked out then. His watch could have been running fast, or he could have just decided to begin the celebration early. Had he, he might have witnessed the events that were about to transpire and intervened. He might have been able to put a stop to them, but he didn't. Back outside, Michael and his friends approach his troubled younger sibling. Hey, there he is, the birthday boy himself. Please don't do this. Not today. And why are you wearing those masks? Well, because we're the entertainment tonight. And boy, do we have a gift for you. What gift? Well, we have decided that since you're such a big fan of Fred Bear, we wanted to show you something special. In fact, so special, you'll never forget this day till you fucking die. As has been established, Michael Afton is... He's an asshole. He is. He's a dick. It's not a secret. Why is he such a dick? 
While his father's hatred for him is probably at least partly to blame for his cruel behavior, Michael seems to delight in tormenting his younger sibling, scaring him at every chance he gets. Knowing that Norman is terrified of the animatronics, one of the older boys restrains Charlie whilst the others grab the cursed birthday boy and lift him to Fredbear's jaws. Okay, Norman, ready for your birthday present? Michael, please, let me go! Time to give Fredbear a big kiss. Ready? One, two, three. Oh God. Oh my God. Think. Think of being sick. As soon as I... As soon as I heard the screaming from outside my office, dining room, I looked over the stage. I saw blood coming from the animatronic's mouth. It was, it was horrific. I, I, I knew it. At that very moment, we were finished. The police arrive on the scene, questioning Henry, Michael, his friends, and everyone else present. I answered a lot of questions from the detectives, and I went home. I nearly gave up that night entirely. The only one who had been absent was William, and Henry dreaded the inevitable confrontation between them. It had been an accident, but William was known for his explosive temper, and Henry was ultimately responsible for all of the kids in the restaurant that night. However, to Henry's surprise, William called him later that night and informed him that he wouldn't be pressing charges. It seemed that he blamed Michael for the death of Norman, and William intended to cooperate with the state in their manslaughter case against him. I got a phone call from William saying he wasn't going to sue me, and that the situation was going to be dealt between him, his boy, and the state of Texas. I, that I didn't believe it. A man who just lost his own son was not angry at me in the slightest. Later that night, William arrived at Fredbear's, furious with himself that he hadn't been there earlier to stop Michael and protect Norman. It was late, and the restaurant should have been deserted. All of the patrons had fled shortly after the bite, Michael was in jail, and Henry had gone home. However, one soul remained. Charlotte Emily, Henry's daughter. As the child of one of the restaurant's founders, as well as Norman Afton's best friend, she was used to hanging around Freddy's, and considering the horrible events of earlier that day, she didn't want to go home. If she did, this would become real. There'd no longer be any possibility that she suddenly found herself in bed, having just awoken from a terrible nightmare. Charlie knew that once she went home and went to sleep, she'd wake up to find that this was the new forever. Norman was dead. As she stood outside the pizzeria, consumed in thought, she barely noticed the old purple sedan slowly pulling up behind her. The next day, I, I got a call from the county sheriff that a little girl was killed. It was my own daughter, Charlie. She was sliced up all over her body. She had a laceration in her neck, hit her jugular, gone. The sheriff found her in the, in the trash pile behind the building, just covered in blood. The reports from local teenagers smelling something unusually bad and coming from back in the alleyway. They never found who, who killed my daughter. No, no footprints, no fingerprints, no weapon, nothing. I should have known that it was William. With both founders having lost a child mere hours apart and facing terrible press in the wake of the accident, the two closed down Fredbear's family diner for good. This wasn't the end of the franchise, though. Shortly after, they opened up Freddy Jr.'s. The animatronics were reworked into smaller, friendlier, cheaper, more colorful designs, and actually, the business thrived. 1985 and 86 proved to be lucrative years for the newly rebranded Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and it seemed like the franchise had finally left its demons in the past. You know, 85 and 86 were great years, but 1987, that was the worst year of my life. Five kids, they, 
They went missing in the restaurant in the span of one week and a day. <laughs> one fucking week. A daytime guard named Jeremy Fitzgerald was, was killed by a mangled up animatronic hanging on the ceiling of Kid's Cove. As that white foxy robot came down, bit the man in the face, crushed him, crushed his skull, gone, dead. Naturally, with five kids having gone missing and security guard Jeremy Fitzgerald having been killed by the mangle, the restaurant was quickly shut down. Locals were horrified and police questioned Henry and William for nearly a month before the case went cold. Something wasn't right. Henry had worked with Fredbear and Spring Bonnie for years and they never acted the way these new animatronics did. Sure, Norman had been killed by Fredbear, but that wasn't the animatronics' fault. Michael was responsible for that. The new robots were different. Something about them just wasn't right. I began to go insane and think, just think, maybe those toys were alive. I privately hired two truck drivers to dump the, the toy animatronics out in the woods just to never be seen again. Six years have passed since that day, and somehow, William convinced Henry to open up one final restaurant. One final Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I can't. I can't believe I reopened the restaurant again. William convinced me to try out the, the last few animatronics he created, and I did it. I opened the final Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. <laughs> After all, money makes the world go round, you know? However, this time, Henry was suspicious. There had just been too many grisly coincidences over the years surrounding their establishments, and the common denominator across all of them were William and Henry. Henry knew that he wasn't responsible for these crimes, and while he didn't want to believe it, he started to wonder if maybe William wasn't the man he thought he was. Recently, I've done some thinking, a bit of snooping around, and my discoveries have been, to put it short, a nightmare. I managed to find a a boatload of VHS tapes from every year we were open in the parts and service room. And what I saw, what I saw made me puke. It made me scream. I couldn't sleep for two weeks straight. On these files were footage of the animatronics. They were looking directly in the cameras. I, I knew I was a sane man. I know what I saw. But I never knew it was this bad. For over 20 years, I was lied to. My, my own partner hid things from me that I would have never believed in my entire life. I discovered that William Afton, my own partner, my brother, he had killed five children. He blamed it on me. He was responsible for the death of my own fucking daughter. Hidden away in these VHS tapes, Henry discovered the truth. William hadn't just killed Charlie. He hadn't just murdered those kids or programmed that robot to kill Jeremy. No. William Afton had done something far, far worse. I knew he had forgiven me for the malfunction that killed his son. I knew it wasn't over. Now what? What do I do? Do I report it to the police? Do, do I go after him? Do, do I kill him? No. I've done something you'll, you'll never figure out to the day he dies. Recognizing that William will never stop opening these restaurants to facilitate his horrific crimes, Henry sets a trap for his old partner. Who knows, maybe he'll try on one of those Fredbear suits we made back in 77. Let's just say that if he hops in one of those suits, he'll get the shock of his fucking life. <laughs> At some point in the past, Henry might have been invigorated by these revelations. He might have made it his mission to take Afton down and force him to face justice, ensuring that none would ever again suffer the way that Charlie or Norman did. However, Henry was tired. After years of constant financial hardships, the bite of 83, the disappearances of 87, the death of Jeremy Fitzgerald, the robots that acted like they were alive and suffering, and most importantly, after the murder of his daughter Charlie, Henry had had enough. He had failed. Time and time again, William had used him to support his penchant for unspeakable acts, and not once had Henry managed to put a stop to it. Henry couldn't save any of them, not even his own daughter. Ashamed by his failures, the troubled co-founder of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza prepares to take his own life. So it is with a heavy heart, I, I end this recording here and, and I make amends with God's creations. I'll finally go to a place where I will see my daughter for eternity.
Thank you for listening to William. Your eternal pit of misery has opened this swallow your asshole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. I'll see you in hell. I love you, Charlie. I, I didn't... I didn't want this to happen, any of this. But, I mean... I just can't... just can't go on any longer. I have to leave. I have to. Every cell of this cancer has to be destroyed. That's including me. So... <laughs>